Today I'm performing a static weight calibration of Vons S-Works Quark Power Meter. So I thought I'd run through the process and show you guys what it's all about. What we have today is Vons bike elevated so I can hang the static weight off here cleanly. I have a calibrated 20 kilo weight, certified 20 kilos. It's very heavy and the mounting hardware is 23 grams. So that factors into the calculations as well. And I'm running the Quelvin app up here on the laptop as well with an ant stick in the side. The power meter is only an ant, it's a few years old now, and that's why we're having to recalibrate it to see if it's still spot on. So what we're gonna run through today is the static weight calibration. This is not a zero offset, this is actually a recalibration of the power meter to make sure it's spot on. We'll run through that, we'll see if Vonza Watts are high or low or spot on, and then we'll keep it honest on the Tax Neo. Okay, let's get stuck into it. The beauty of this is there's some simple mathematics behind the scenes that we can use to verify what we're seeing is correct. The mathematics are the crank length, so 170 mil, the weight itself I've got down here, which is 20.023 kilos, and we have to factor in gravity as well, which is 9.81. So putting all that together, 20.023 times 9.81 times 0 0.170 for the crank length in meters, comes out and gives us a theoretical weight that we should be seeing right here, maximum force of 33.392 newton meters. That's the value the Quelvin app will be using to verify whether the power meter is reading high or low and adjusting the slope according to that. Okay, now onto the process. Vons power meter has an ANT ID of 16184, so we need to search for that within the utility here. We hit connect, and we get some diagnostics straight from here. We can see the power, RPM, etc., and revolutions. It's not doing much at the moment, so nothing's on the screen. What we're after today is the slope and we can see on the screen here, current slope 5.69, factory slope 5.69. If there's any deviation from that over the years, we'll find out today. So what we need to do is click on calibrate slope. The numbers we had before, the crank length and weight, we have to enter into the tool here. So crank length 170 millimeters, weight U 20.023 kilograms. And we hit continue. Okay, it tells us there we need to unweight the cranks have nothing on it for now. We hit continue, place the chain on the largest chain ring and ensure the crank is level and there's no weight on the crank. Okay, largest chain ring. Okay, that's stable. Take the reading, then now there's zero torque on the cranks at the moment. And now place the chain in the smallest chain ring and the weight on the left crank arm. So I'll flip it down to the small ring, finish that. Obviously we're about level. Okay, we're locking that in. Make sure everything's stable and the bike is still horizontal. So that's as stable as it's going to be. Make sure that crank is horizontal. I'll pull it down a little bit. Lock it in. To lock this in place, I've adjusted the back brake so we can use the quick release of the back to lock the wheel so it doesn't move. So everything nice and still. The theoretical numbers we had here was 33.392. The first reading we have is 33.9, and it's floating around 0 0.92 point. Very close, not quite the same though. So let's hit take reading on that. Okay, same reading, but from the other crank arm. Okay, not quite horizontal, so we need to move that up a little bit. And that there should be right to go. So the reading we have on the right crank arm, small ring, 34.21, it's bouncing around a little bit, but we just hit go on that, we'll grab the average. Okay, now onto the other side, big chain ring.
Okay, it's important that weight is still and the bike is still horizontal as well. That's all looking pretty good. And we need to make sure the crank. Oops. Is horizontal for that reading. Okay, spot on. 33.59 on that reading. And the last measurement with the weight, same again, are oh, the crank. We'll just zero all that out. Okay, that's on the horizontal for our last measurement, 33.65 or so bouncing around. We hit take reading on that. Remove the weight. Final steps. There we go. Finishing calibration. Okay, so what we have here, old slope 5.69, new slope 5.61, ring difference 1.25. So what we can see there is the new slope is a little lower. So Von's power meter was reading a little bit high. What we'll do now though, we'll finish this off, we'll jump on the Neo, do a quick spin up, see what the numbers look like against the tax Neo. Jumping over now to DC Rainmaker's analysis tool to have a look at the three and a half minute step test I performed there in ERG mode on the Tax Neo. Uh, what we can see here, happy days. From the 100 watts, stepping up to around 150 watts, 200 watts, and as we step up further and further, you can see the quark, I guess the only real nitpick there is the quark is probably a little bit quicker to change those watts given where it's measuring power. But from then, it's only a few watts different. So happy days, calibration process looks to be good and we're good to go with that. Von's now going to get the correct power for the rest of her Festi 500. As mentioned previously, this is an older model Quark, so it's Ant Plus only, no Bluetooth, but it's a few years old, it's going along quite well. With that recalibration, hopefully we'll get a few more years out of that. Okay, thanks for watching, we'll see you soon.